I remember saying yes for the first time and addressing myself, saying hi and so on. And when he spoke, he had an American accent. I should say when you spoke, you had an American accent. No, 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 you had, I didn't think you were Danish. I, I thought, I thought Jesper was from, yeah, I thought he was an exchange student or another international student, but from the States. Yeah, I figured that's the case. Well, all, well, well, international student graduates, I suppose. Anyway, and then- I'm gonna, I'm gonna very quickly uh, interject. So sorry for interrupting. The reason I, I'm kind of cringing at the remarks of me having an American accent is that I know that I have a sort of Americanized way of speaking because of all the like TV and video games and stuff. Yeah. But there is this um, this trope about Danish people that we believe we have no accent at all. That that our our English is just so flawless and fluent and everything that we just we could pass as non Danes or as native speakers of some other country. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's usually wrong. <laughs> and I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, feel bad at all if there were people who thought that my accent was kind of weird and, and off in some way because I, I didn't grow up in an English-speaking country. I have a really hard time actually just saying the word English because it has this sh sound at the end. But at least my accent is, I believe slightly less noticeable than some other Danish accents. There is a, like, I enjoy making like an exaggerated version of the accent, but a non-exaggerated version would sound uh, something like this, where people will speak English, but just with their own natural Danish way of uh, saying the words. So it, it comes off very flat and there's no uh, melody or anything in it. So at least I don't sound like that as much as I believe some other people do. Anyway, that was my weird tangent about Danish accents because Wojcik keeps insisting that I sound American and she didn't know that I was Danish, but I don't I don't fully buy it. I think um, like rose tinted glasses do a lot, but <laughs> uh, do go on. So you, oh, you, you came into the room or we met in the kitchen or something. Yeah, it was in the kitchen. And I spoke. There was a dining table in the kitchen, yeah. After introducing myself, I did notice it wasn't like I was just um, like a passerby. You also you began to involve, well, not you began, we're all involved in conversation and talking about whatever the hell the food we're having. Um, I think maybe that's when you brought the meat, or maybe that was later. Anyway, so we did have lunch together. It was nice. The conversations we had was also, were also nice. Um, I remember at some point you did say something about Ghana, and it was a, a surprise to me. Because it was nice meeting someone, another person. And maybe at that point I must have known that you were Danish because of this, this memory. But it was nice meeting a, a Danish person that wasn't um, confused about me being from Kenya. And not just, oh, you must be from Africa. No, it was, you understood. You knew, it wasn't, yeah, you knew that Kenya is a country and so on. Like Africa is not just one giant country. So I remember that, that was like a big, like, ding. That's nice. That's very nice not have that um interaction again bit of a surprise caught me off guard as well because even i not that i keep up with other countries other african countries news but it was just nice to know that you are you know something about the continent so that that anyway that was like a, a good green flag good flag if that counts but i remember we moved on to the living room to watch anime and well, it was nice. Conversations were conversation was good, like all together, like Dima, Mirta, Yesva, myself. It was nice. Nice ambience and everything. I remember the evening as being sort of um, like a weird happenstance thing. Happenstance. Like I came over to visit. We had been uh, me, Dima, Mircha had been hanging out occasionally. Mm -hmm. And I just came over and I decided to bring some alcohol like a different type of alcohol than we usually had we would usually have like beers or rum so i decided to bring something different and at the time they were both exhausted basically all the time and i can't i can't really remember why there was something about how well dima has never been a night owl but mircha was really like he would just fall over in bed at some point during the evening. Mm. 
just like fall asleep. Fall and sleep, yeah. Good. Yeah. And so I'm a bit of a night owl. I can stay up pretty late, basically whenever. And you didn't seem to be too tired either. So we were just at some point, the two of us in the apartment, while the other two guys were asleep somewhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, which made it um, a nice evening of getting to know each other and talking a lot. Um, eventually, I remember sleeping on like a sofa bed. That was like really hard and, and not very comfy. <laughs> and uncomfortable. Yeah, I woke up with like a really, really sore back. I felt like an old man. Mm. <laughs> it's a bad sofa bed it went well it was nice and oh i should say by the way after we fell asleep nothing happened nothing pg-13 or whatever the hell um the next day i yeah he yeah he just woken up or something but i really wanted to shower so i went to shower then i came back and when i was done i dressed and everything I couldn't find him. So I was a bit like, oh no, oh no, oh no. Maybe it is just the one that's done. Don't panic too much. And I felt like, this is silly. I'm just going to ask Dima. So I did. Dima, one of the housemates who's his friend. So I went to Dima or Mecha and I just asked you guys, um, is it okay if you can give me your number? No, I don't think I asked for your number. I think I asked for how to contact you and they suggested Facebook, I think, or text. I'm not too sure which, what some of they want to be above. Then from then on, we continued to talk but via much contact him through Messenger or through Facebook and mm -hmm. he communicated that way for some time. And it was nice. It was very, very nice. And then life happened after applying for asylum and then the pandemic. Anyway, and you did forward. mention you'd, you'd had some, some less than fortunate dating experiences in Denmark as well. Yes, yeah, I mean, you can see the previous videos with the Badu experiences and such, that, that shows how and why, or rather, what led to me just not really giving a damn about the guys in a meeting, or getting too attached to things going, being too hopeful, as I'm trying to say. I wasn't too hopeful at the time that we met. And then it wasn't what I was thinking at all. So that was nice. It caught me off guard, and I think that's why this, the memories of this experience are still very relatively clear given that it's been what like a while two, yeah okay just over two years yeah so that's how we met so we're talking about how um i'm visiting and i don't know what to visit because nairobi is a capital city it's a major city it has industrial areas and malls and temples and all this kind of stuff visit. yeah so so i have let's say roughly 10 days in mm -hmm. total to spend in nairobi possibly one of those days or two of those days like leaving the city to go and see some of the countryside but i'm planning on mostly visiting nairobi but it's it's a big place and i don't know where to go do you have any suggestions on where to go? Casually throwing that question out there. <laughs> I have, de I definitely have lots of suggestions and I've started, or I do have an itinerary list at the moment, but I want to ask all the people that are watching if you could help us with this one. Yeah. Do you guys have any suggestions of places to visit within that time frame of like maybe, yeah, let's say max one night, if it has to be a long, like a trip, not a long trip, but somewhere to stay overnight, maybe one night. If not, um, day trip sort of things, places to visit, um, food to try out, different restaurants, cafes. This is like something that, that both of us are asking uh, the audience of this lovely video, the lovely audience, I should say, of this lovely video, because uh, Oshara hasn't been back in Kenya for very long. She's been back in Kenya for something like six months now. and. It's been years, so stuff must have happened in the meantime. Oh, and I know, I know from like looking at, at pictures on on Google Maps, like you, you go on the on Google Maps, you find a, a cafe or something, and there are pictures of people having a wonderful time at this cafe or restaurant or barbecue place or whatever. And it looks like a lot of fun, and it looks like 
people are having a really good time. And some of these places must have popped up in the past couple of years. So if any of you know of a place that's like really, really cool and hip and happening or whatever, um, please let us know about it in the comments below. If you, if you so please, I'm not going to ask you, um, anymore. I'm going to leave or share to do the whole YouTubing thing. Yeah. So if anyone has any suggestions of places to visit, um, things that we must experience or that, especially for yes, because I mean, I lived here before, so it's fine. Easy for me to experience it again at any time anyway. <laughs> yeah. All the places that you said you suggest, please, could you share them in the comments down below or feel free to share them in the comments down below. That'd be great. Please and thank you. Pretty please with sugar lumps and everything. And if you'd like to, um, remember we're open to possibly meeting people in person. If you'd like to just hang out and just chill and get to meet Jasper as well and, and talk to him in person until so this video start. You're very welcome to do so. Yeah, once again, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.